Hi, this is Tom with the second of my detailed videos showing you how to make a keyboard in Blender. In this episode, we'll be making the switches using various tools within Blender, including the Boolean and Array modifiers. This series includes four modelling tutorials, as well as two dealing with texturing. I'm going to upload a new episode each day, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. I'm going to assume that you know the basic functions of Blender, but to recap, to add an object is Shift A, to switch between edit mode and object mode is tab, to zoom in and out is scroll wheel, and to orbit around your part is middle click and move your mouse. So all that's changed is that I've added all of the keycap and then I've added a new collection by right clicking and pressing new, and then I've added all of the 61 keys to that collection. That's all that's changed. Start by putting your 3D cursor in a safe place and I'd put there. And I'm going to hide my keycaps because I don't want them getting in the way. Which means also we can put our 3D cursor at 0, 0. So add a plane and make it 14.5 millimeters squared, sorry. And put it in the center of your world. Like this. Or thereabouts, it doesn't really matter, as always. But this is this look this is a good. Now extrude it 0.75mm, like that, and then inset the faces by pressing I, like this, but only, we're only doing it slightly, maybe even less than that, less than that. That looks good. And now we're going to extrude that 5mm, to there. Now once again we're going to be moving some vertices but this time we're doing two at a time so they're equally equidistant. So around there and then move them down to there. So that's looking good. I'll put a picture of a keycap or even my keycap I made the other day on the screen showing you what it, what it should look like. But that looks good enough for those two. Now we're going to select these two and do the exact same, but to put them in a different place. These ones are a bit further back, so that looks fine. That looks good. So we've got the basic top half of our keycap. Our switch, sorry. Now we're going to select this top face and inset it to around here. And then we're going to move this edge down. This is going to be the base of our stem, so we want to extrude it a bit. So I'm going to extrude it about 0.2. 0.5. 0 .5, 0 0.2. That looks good. We don't want it just we want it just showing. We don't want it to be too pronounced. Now we're going to go to the bottom view. Or the base view, whatever. And we're going to select this face. And we're going to inset it again, slightly more this time. And then we're going to extrude about about four and a half millimeters. And this is going to be the base of our of our switch. Oh, maybe a bit less, maybe a bit less, around three point five. About three point five. That looks good. And then we need to scale on the X around there and scale on the Y like that. You scale by pressing S and if you want to move a specific axis you press Y. If you want to move everything apart from that axis you press shift whatever axis you want to miss. Just a little tip. So that's the basic shape, but now we're missing we're missing the cross, that we're missing the stem, sorry. And we're also missing the pin and the block at the bottom, the little bit that holds it into the PCB. So we're gonna make those. But first we'll start with the the stem. Because that's the bit you'll see. So we're going to add a cube, which is one millimeter, and in the center of our world, just so we can keep track of it. And once again, we're going to be selecting four of the faces and extruding them one mil. Nice. 
and now we're going to extrude it up because we want it to be a bit taller than one mil. We can't really do anything about it before now, but that's the wrong button. Don't press that. Delete dissolve edges. And now go into face select mode and select this top face and extrude. Around two mil, sorry, that looks better. There we go. That looks brilliant. So we're now going to select this outside edge because we don't need it anymore and dissolve this edge. So now we're ready to bevel these sides, these edges, in x-ray mode because that much makes it a bit easier. And deselect these ones. These don't want to be beveled because it's going to be the bottom of our well, stem and it won't really, it won't attach. Oh. So yeah, there we go. We can now bevel these. And we don't need much, we just need about 0.05 to look good. And one segment's fine for this scale. You don't need any more than that. You don't see it. It just makes it look less sharp, which you don't want it to be. So now we can bring back our switch and our stem on top of the, on top of the switch, like this. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, ex I'm gonna scale that a bit because that looks a bit off. So maybe 1.5 millimeters if you're in the in the future, in the past. If you're watching this in advance, put it that way. Scale it on the z-axis. And then move it down to be a good height. That looks good. And then we can use again a new another Boolean modifier and select Union and this cube. And you can delete the cube. Don't delete the cube before applying it though. You can just hide the cube for now. But that looks good, so we can apply it and then we can delete the cube. Make sure you apply it before you've done it. Before so now we're going to make the we're going to make the pin and the and the block that fits into the PCB. So for this we're going to be making a negative as always, and then we're going to add it with a boolean. So let's do that. I'm going to flip my model, and just so it's, the, and we're going to add a cylinder in the center of our world, in the center of our world that is around 1.5 mil. So it's 3mm diameter and about 8mm long. That looks good. And then in edit mode of that, I'm going to select those vertices and bevel them. So it's a, a sphere, so it's got a half circle end. And then I'm going to move it down. But this, I'm going to move it down first, sorry. And then we're going to bevel it. So now, so bevel 1.5, so that's the full radius, and we're going to give it around four segments. That looks good. That looks great. And then we're going to move it back up. So we don't, we only want a slight bit sticking out of it, like that. That looks great. So then go into edit mode of the cylinder, and now we can add a cylinder which is. 0.5 radius and around 8 vertices just to give us a bit more geometry to work with and then you can position it preferably where you can see it, let's move that and then we can position it wherever we want on here now pins are flatter on one axis there like this and then we can du then we can duplicate that to make a second pin because it's a switch, it needs two pins you know, to make the contact, you know. And that looks good, maybe a bit flatter. Scale on the Y axis by pressing SY. Make sure you're in X-ray mode when you scale, because otherwise you'll only be scaling one bit, and you don't want that. So that looks good. Position them around there, I'll, give, I'll put a reference photo up and then we're done. We just need to position them how we want. 
So the pins stick out a bit more, so we can move them down. So select both of them, and press G and Z to move them on the Z axis, and that looks good. We're going to give them a, we're going to give them a point. So. I'm going to move the, we're going to add an edge loop and then we're going to move it down to the bottom so we can scale this in like this so it makes a nice point and then we're going to do the same for this control R edge loop move it down select the bottom and scale on all axes axes and then we're done that's it we've made the pin assembly and we're going to now combine it so to do that once again we're going to be using a modifier boolean modifier union you know what to do union select your cylinder select the cylinder with the eyedropper and then you can hide it see if it worked that worked fine so you can apply it and then we can delete the cylinder. Well done, you've made your first switch. And unfortunately, we've made it the wrong way around. So how are we going to fix that? I think that we can delete these four corners and delete them, delete these four edges, then select these Rotate on the Z, 180. And then we can move it to be in the right place. That looks perfect. On the Y. And the Z looks good as well. And then we can, once again, make these edges. And that's fixed that problem. So we now need to make these faces. So that's fixed our problem there. If you didn't know, the, the, the pins were on the wrong side of the switch. So we were just fixing that. So you've done, basically. Now you just need to give it a load of bevels. And you've, you're done. So I'm going to do that right now. And I'll speed it up. So you can bevel it to whatever you like, but just don't don't overdo it because you can definitely see when things have been over beveled, as it were. I don't know if that's a word actually, but you know what I mean. Don't overdo it, and you don't need too many segments for this small of an object. Basically, the more vertices you've got, the longer it'll take to render in the final thing. So you don't want that. So bevel these, and you're pretty much done. That looks good. That looks pretty good. Now comes the fun task of duplicating each one of these switches for each of the keycaps. And that's done in the exact same way as you did before, involving you positioning your first switch, going into the array modifiers, and adjusting the relative offset to be the right thing. So just to recap in this episode, we've, you, we've made the switches, we've used several boolean modifiers and we've fixed a few problems that we had making it, it was not the right rotation, so we fixed that by removing edges and then rotating the selected body. So thanks for watching and see you next time.